Let's talk about these developments with us from Moscow with CNN contributor Jill Doherty and joining us from Los Angeles, political analyst Peter Matthews. Good to see you both. Thanks for joining us. Much to talk about. Peter, though, let's begin with developments regarding President Trump's national security advisor, CNN learning that Mr. Trump will release H.R. McMaster from that position, uh, that the president has decided the announcement a short time ago, uh, that President Trump was releasing Mr. McMaster, this after releasing his Secretary of State. Uh, McMaster just last month dressed down by the president for saying that Russia definitely interfered in the U.S. election and now this. What do you make of it? It's unfathomable because McMaster is one of the most solid foreign policy people and experienced that he had, the president had, and yet he's going to dismiss a man like that after dismissing his Secretary of State. And I think it's very <clears throat> untoward in the sense that there's no stability around, and people have to know that when someone works with the president and for the president as a cabinet official or as a high-level official, that they can trust what that official says. So if he keeps repeating and sending a third national security advisor now, since in, within a year and a half, people are going to, the other leaders in the world are going to say, who can we trust when they speak? Are they speaking for the president or not when they speak? Because he keeps dismissing them. It's very dangerous in terms of how, leadership ability of the president and of the United States as a whole to uh, have this happening. Yeah, Jill, to you in Moscow, um, there's been wide-ranging reports uh, that Moscow has wanted to shake things up in the United States and cause chaos. Uh, is this a sign that they're getting what they want? <laughs> uh, well, maybe uh, directly or indirectly, uh, it looks as if there's a lot going on, on, you know, among the Americans themselves creating this, especially in the White House. I think, you know, the, the Russians at this point ha are looking at what's going on at the White House and probably um, just kind of letting it unfold, letting the circus unfold. Because they don't have to do too much at this point. You have a lot of chaos at the White House, especially in terms of what we're just talking about right now with the NSC. I mean, that is the body that the president uses to create and form uh, his ideas about foreign policy. And if that is becoming dysfunctional, which it, it appears that it's at least not functioning correctly. That's a real problem. And then you also have this lack of communication between Russia and the United States, and now the UK saying also that they're going to be cutting off uh, communication with Russia at, at senior levels because of the spy poisoning. This is very bad because there is uh, a definite possibility of misinterpretation when neither side uh, really is talking. There was just a quote that came out that we confirmed with Dmitry Peskov, by the way, uh, who's the spokesperson for the president, saying that uh, President Putin is extremely concerned by the destructive and provocative stance of the UK. That's obviously an expected response by the Russian president, but I think everybody is extremely concerned uh, on both sides where we're going with all of this. Right, and to her point, uh, Peter, uh, what about the president uh, revolving door and to the fact that who is he listening to? Is he just wanting yes men? I think that he wants a lot of yes men and yes women, and he's probably listening to the last person that he listened to and decides to do what that person says. It's not good to see a president who is not directly driven by his inner ideas as to what should be done in the world in America. He should have a core value system, which it seems like he's lacking to a large extent, because that's one reason there's such instability. He keeps appointing people and firing them if they stand up to him and try to advise him properly about what to be done. He gets rid of them. And this is just not at all stable. There's no stability here at all, and it's very dangerous in the international climate like it is today. And I do believe that President Putin was right when he's concerned about this rising animosity and miscalculation that could occur among the three countries, or about between Russia and other countries in the West. There's got to be some tamping down here, and it begins with the president acting more in a more stable manner and sticking with key advisors that he appoints and who will have the experience that he does not have, apparently. He hasn't showed that stability, certainly, so we'll wait and see what happens there. The other development, of course, the U.S. Special Counsel has asked the Trump team to hand over business documents related to Russia. What could Mr. Mueller be looking for here? And it's been noted they didn't ask Trump teams for documents. They issued a subpoena. Well, he's probably looking at um, what the deal was in Moscow that the Trump organization was considering building a tower, a Trump Tower in Moscow, 
and an email was sent by one of the top people in Moscow who claims to have known President Putin very well, advising President Trump in the email, the Trump organization, to go ahead and build a Trump Tower, that would actually curry favor and put the United States, uh, at least President Trump, in a better position to win the, uh, the election. So this is what has been reported by the Washington Post and other entities, and Mr. Mueller is looking very carefully into this possible connection between financial dealings in Moscow by the Trump Organization and possible uh, influence over policy and also the ability for him to get elected. It's a very, very concerning situation that could rise here with the Trump with the Mueller uh, results. Now, Jill, it seems repeatedly, despite Mr. Trump's denials of Russian involvement, that the special counsel continues its hunt down that path. And with every step, there is a deeper division between these two countries. Has there ever been a worse time for relations since the Cold War between the U.S. and Russia? And what does that signify for uh, the world and diplomacy in the world? Well, I mean, on a very serious level, uh, it is it is life or death for the planet. I mean, both of these countries, Russia and the United States, can essentially destroy civilization in the world, and that is not an exaggeration. And even on the nuclear issue, uh, there is no indication that we will move forward, even on these basic things that Russia and the United States have been doing for years, which are arms control agreements. That's one. And then you have, I, I would call it really a, a very emotional approach to this, as opposed to a rational, very sober analysis of what should be done. I mean, if the United States believes these things, which they are now coming out uh, with reports and, and the uh, Treasury sanctions, etc., and, and Mueller investigation, if that is what they are contending, then there has to be some type of very sober conversation with Russia. But what's happening right now, because of that lack of structural communication, really realistic structural communication, it is one uh, thing lobbed over, uh, you know, by a tweet or uh, the I would have to say the Russians are making a lot of very snarky comments uh, very dismissive laughing at what the United States and especially the UK uh, is saying right now so I, I think it you know realistically it should go to a very serious and concrete discussion of where we are headed because this could easily spin out of control yeah Peter why don't you follow up on that uh, comment yeah. uh, by Jill Yes, I would like to. In fact, I'd like to cite Barbara Tuckman, the great American historian, who said that World War I began out of miscalculation and misunderstanding. And this could, we're going back to history now, and this could happen again, especially with conditions as they are. And I think that uh, you're absolutely correct that when you say we have to get to become sober, settle things down, and have institutional communication and build those institutions back up again in the communications realm between Russia and the United States. And miscalculation is a very dangerous situation that can actually occur once again, as it did with World War I. Other wars, other wars have started that way also. And it's not good that at this point the countries are at the worst or the lowest level right now of relationships. And any little thing could cause it to spin out of control completely. Right. So I really and advise President Trump to really get this thing going once again with Russia. Well, and it may be a while because there are some reports that this investigation could continue on for several more months by the special counsel. But Jill, I want to talk to you about both the U.S. along with Britain, France, and Germany. You alluded to it, have denounced Russia for its alleged role in the nerve agent attack on a former Russian spy in Great Britain and his daughter. How will Russia respond? You mentioned so far they haven't had much to say about this. Well, we know that they are going to retaliate in terms of kicking out uh, British diplomats. That's kind of a given. Uh, we're just waiting for the announcement, so that will happen. They've essentially said they would do that. But I think what, you know, the concern here in Moscow is a lot of these, um, the things that the UK is going to do, which haven't been specifically defined yet, and a lot of them have to do with uh, financial issues. You know, Russia has, Russia, uh, oligarchs and pretty well-off Russians have a lot of financial interests, as we all know, in London. And so if the UK begins to squeeze that and make things more transparent, even change laws, have something like the United States has, which is the Magnitsky Act, uh, punishing and sanctioning people uh, whom they accuse of human rights violations, things like that, it could make it very uncomfortable for Russia uh, because they won't be 
able to use London as their base of operations or the place that they send their uh, their kids to school, et cetera. So, uh, be but because it hasn't really been defined, I think Moscow is now waiting to see specifically what will happen. But easy would be the predictable, kicking people out diplomatically, PNGing people. That's That's one thing. But I think it goes far. It could go far beyond that. Yeah, and Peter, is that the is that the way they should go? Should they continue to squeeze Russia on this? Is that the right way to approach this, or is there something else? I think there has to be a balance because if you go too far in that direction, there is a danger. This could spin out of control, and will be a reaction from Russia against Britain, and then Britain against Russia, and the United States will take sides. And it'll be very much, very difficult to settle the situation down once again. And as Jill mentioned, these are the two world's still very most armed countries with the most number of nuclear weapons. And you've got to find the way back to arms control and to continue that negotiations, especially with the SDI being taken out of commission by President Bush and now Russia having a, a weapon they claim can actually penetrate our defenses. This is escalating way too much. We should be de-escalating, especially in the nuclear area. And these kinds of events, like the, what happened in Britain, and the reactions that become extreme can cause a real problem in bringing the, even the nuclear negotiator under control, which we have to absolutely have right now. So when and time. how, when and how would, will it de-escalate? We'll talk with you again about that. Thank you so much, uh, Jill Doherty in Moscow, Peter Matthews in Los Angeles. We thank you. Thank you, Nell.